is all totally manageable, okay? I'm sure that we're gonna look back on this in a few hours and just laugh. <laughs> Granted, it didn't go the way that I had planned it exactly. I just thought that it would be funny. You know, he does improv comedy, for God's sake. He's really into comedy. He takes workshops, he even performs every Wednesday night at this coffee shop. I just honestly thought it would be so him. He's gonna love it, you know? It'll be this great story we can tell. It only happened at all because a week or so earlier, we'd been going through the wedding service and he, 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 he was the one that was like, you know, maybe we should write our own vows. And I was like, no, sorry, hard pass. No, I love him, but he, come on, he was a literature major in college. He wrote his thesis on this this group of poets, this this French group, this French school. Sorry, I'll remember it. Anyway, the point is, I was fairly confident that any vows he wrote would be meaningful and poetic, but also totally incomprehensible to the vast majority of guests, including and especially my family. Oh, no, don't don't get me wrong. They're great. They're just very straightforward and literal-minded people. Attorneys are like that. <laughs> I mean, he always said that was one of the things that he liked about my family and me. He always joked about it, that he was marrying into a family of hard-headed tax and state attorneys. <laughs> oh, I, I went into the firm that my dad and my uncle founded, plus two of my brothers are in it, too. Him the part-time editor of an online quarterly of symbolist, symbolist poetry. Ha! Knew I'd remember it. Opposites attract and all that. I mean, we, we joked about it. So we went with the traditional service, but there's that part. You know, if anyone here knows of any reason that these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. Well, we got to that part of the planning and we were both just like, what is that? What is that for? I mean, it's obviously some sort of legal relic from the Middle Ages or something and people only remember it now because they use it in bad romantic comedies for some stupid suspenseful scene when like the right guy interrupts the wedding at the last minute and rescues the bride from the wrong guy. Fucking hate romantic comedies. Most movies in general, actually, but he is this huge movie buff. Yeah, that's what he calls it, a buff, which is also a word I really dislike for some reason. He watches everything. Silent movies. Samurai movies. I mean, his idea of a good night out, if he doesn't have improv class, is going to some tiny little art house cinema. How do those places even survive where the screen is like smaller than your TV and they sell espresso? Jesus, how could anyone hate movies, he'd say. I mean, we would, we would joke about it. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I just think it's all so contrived. Well, of course it's contrived. He'd say all art is contrivance. That's the pleasure. Oh, I'm not saying it has the joyful exuberance of estate planning. Ha ha ha. That kind of pissed me off, but he said he was kidding, which I would know more about if I had a sense of humor, which is something that he also, also often teases me about. But you know what? That is kind of bullshit because my sense of humor is fine. Thank you very much. It's just I'm not trying to make a living off of it. I am not trying to make a living off of it, he would say. That's just something I do for fun. Well, that's a relief. <sighs> Sorry. The point was, he wanted the speak now bit in for the sake of its perverse yet pointed nostalgia. And I wanted it out since, come on, why include extraneous and obsolete legal language? And we really, we really argued. And we almost never fight, but I guess I kind of cried a little. And I'm not, I'm not usually a crier, but come on, weddings are stressful. He got emotional too, he even apologized. He was sweet. And we agreed to forget the speak now and everything was okay. <sighs> but then today, this morning, 
I was thinking about another little, uh, not not fight, but tension we'd had over the guest list. I think that he was a little upset or self-conscious that the guests were heavily weighted to my side, but my family has a wide circle of friends and clients who were important to invite, and most of his friends couldn't come in for whatever reason, financial. The main group of friends he did have coming were from his improv group, so I had this little idea for a prank. I thought it would be really fun if to surprise him and to show him that I do have a fucking sense of humor. I arranged with the judge who was officiating and one of the improv guys, this guy named Kenny, who was really funny and also his closest friend in the improv group to put back in the speak now thing without telling the groom. <laughs> and then when everybody paused, Kenny would stand up and like improv some funny reason why we shouldn't be married and everybody would laugh and get to see a part of his life that he was really proud of and was always worried that my family didn't really get, you know, his whole artistic comedic side. And it would just be really fun. Ah. At first, uh, Kenny, when I took him aside to tell him, the plan before the ceremony, he didn't think it was such a great idea and he, he looked kind of upset, but I, I talked him into it. I can be very persuasive when I want to be, it's part of my work. So eventually he got over his stage fright or whatever it was and said, okay, if I was sure that that's what I wanted, he would do it. Afterwards, um, my husband blamed Kenny at first he said, he said, why would he stand up and say something like that? He looked very pale and confused, a little sick. And, and I guess he wasn't, you know, point in fact, technically my husband, because we had taken a break from the ceremony. We had to. The guests all went into the reception where it would be held while we worked things out. I never meant for Kenny to say that, I told him. I mean, we, we both started to cry. What do you mean, he said. He looked even more confused. You knew that was gonna happen? So I explained about the prank. I didn't know what Kenny would say. He was supposed to like make it up. I thought he was gonna be funny. I never in a million years thought he would say in front of everyone with a trembling voice and tears welling in his eyes that this marriage was a mistake that we had nothing in common, that we should both please, for the love of God, please just take a pause and open our eyes and think about this instead of sleepwalking into a life-altering catastrophe. I said I was sorry. It was all a terrible, terrible idea. It was all my fault. Can we just go back and finish this ceremony? Please pretend it never happened. He agreed it wasn't my fault, it was just a prank. He could see that he did not blame me, but now that it had happened, he did think that maybe we should take a pause, same word that Kenny used when he spoke. There was more after that, but it didn't really go anywhere helpful. We, uh, we sent the guests home and I came back here. that the situation is manageable. Like I said before, I mean, I, I know that we can work this out and I do think we'll look back in the future and just laugh about it. <laughs> but right now, um, if you'll like, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm really tired and I just need to get out of this fucking dress.